The following is a copyrighted presentation of the Southwest Athletic Conference in conjunction with Raycom. At the start of the season, the Baylor Bears longed to be in the spotlight. Grant Taft just wanted to see them improve each week. I try never to predict about our team. I said going into this year was that I felt like that uh, the work habits that they had established and their goals uh, were achievable. And that uh, it would have to be done, uh, you know, virtually uh, by taking uh, each single moment and, and conquering it. And you add all those moments to minutes, to hours, to days, to weeks, to months, and then you can build something. That's what we tried to do. Number eight Baylor is in the spotlight today against the Rice Owls and the nation's leading rusher, Trevor Cobb. Central Texas and a crowd of over 40,000 expected at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco for the number eight Baylor Bears playing host to the Rice Owls. We welcome you to Floyd Casey Stadium. Dave Barnett along with former NFL All-Pro defensive lineman Dave Rowe and we really have an individual matchup for the historians today. The number one rusher in the nation, Trevor Cobb for Rice. The number one rated passer in the nation, J.J. Joe for Baylor. And Grant Taft has said, Dave, that he can't imagine J.J. Joe getting any better. But each week he gets better. He's thrown one interception in the first five games. And in Trevor Cobb, you've got a 5'9", 180-pound running back that carries 33 times a game and is averaging five and a half yards to carry. He was held to 68 yards on 28 carries by the Texas defense last week. Last year, the Baylor defense held him to 35 yards. That was his season low, and most of those same characters back for this Baylor defense. All four seniors, all four starters. Per rush against them. Now, J.J. Joe, part of a Baylor offense, which was before the season, thought to be the weak link on this Baylor team which people thought would be led by the defense. Joe says he's glad the offense is holding up their end. Everybody on the offensive team always got, you know, tired of people saying that we weren't holding up our side of the deal, that uh, Baylor's a great defensive team, but they'll never be good because uh, their offense is not the par. You know, so we've been really working hard, and everybody's on the offense has really been working hard to change that. And uh, one of the major cogs in that offense is fullback Robert Strait, who 11 days ago underwent arthroscopic knee surgery and will start today. That's amazing. That is unbelievable. I remember that that would be a season-ending injury when I played football. Today he's out a week and he's back playing. This game for the Rice program could really send them into the stratosphere if they can pull the upset. It would be one of the biggest upsets in college football this year, but they think that they are slowly building the talent level where they can think seriously about pulling off surprises like that. Well, there's a real similarity to this Rice and Baylor program. In 1974, Baylor had a program where they were just kind of floundering. They went down, upset Texas. It gave them instant credibility, and that's what Rice is really hoping for today. This series has been interesting. A one-point game in Houston last year. Baylor had to hold off a late two-point attempt by Rice as they went for their first winning record since 1963. Two years ago, Rice pulled the upset here in Waco, 6-3. And they'll hope for history to repeat itself today. Good shot of the brand-new $8.5 million dollar football and training office complex to the left of your screen. They are awfully proud of that here in Waco. Floyd Casey Stadium, at least 40,000 expected today, and near perfect weather conditions. 81 degrees, breeze out of the north. The record high, 95 degrees, may be matched today, but at least it's dry, 38% humidity. 
And we check the Southwest Airlines team must, first of all, for Fred Goldsmith's Rice Owls today. Well, first of all, Dave, they have got to use the short passes to loosen up the defense to more be able to run the football. Ball control for Rice will be a big factor in keeping J.J. Joe and Baylor's offense off the field. And this has been a season where Rice players believe they can win. They have to continue to that to be su successful. Grant Taft in his 20th year at Baylor. And a 5-0 beginning. Their must today obviously begin with Mr. Cobb. Absolutely. The first thing Baylor must do is devise a game plan to stop Trevor Cobb. Don't even think about looking ahead. Coaches usually can take care of that anyway. And Rice is a fundamentally very sound football team, and Baylor needs to take advantage of whatever Rice gives them on offense. Those are today's Southwest Airlines team must. Jeff Ireland will kick it off for Baylor. And in the middle of that trio of deep receivers is Herschel Crow for Rice. This one is straight down the middle to the nine-yard line, and here's Crow with an alley up the middle. And not bad return yardage out across the 30. The Owls at 2-2, two and two, open 2-0. Two and oh. Greg Willig under some fire after three of those four interceptions occurred in the first half in Austin last week. But Goldsmith going with his experience as the starting quarterback today. We expect to see his backup, Josh LaRocca, at some point. Along with Cobb, Eric Henley, who had 81 catches as a sophomore two years ago, needs a big day. And up front, Trey Teichelman will be somewhat under the gun. He lines up opposite Santana Dotson for Baylor. And will it right to the air? Going deep for Herschel Crow and knocked away and intercepted by Clifford Ellison for Baylor. And they four first half interceptions for Willing in the last two weeks. And what a play by Ellison on the corner. He looks at his receiver and he doesn't look back until he sees the receiver look back. Now get the hands up in his face. Now look at the ball. Concentrate. Get control of it. The foot down. The official in, in great position to make the call there. Again, look at the ball. Get control of it. And keep that foot in bounds. You can see in the bottom part of your screen it was just inside the line. Baylor has been a great takeaway team this year. One of the best in the country, and J.J. Joe is the best. Rice secondary saying, nope, a trap by Lee Miles, but it wasn't. And those are Joe's numbers this year. They expected him to be good. They admit they did not expect the sophomore from Arlington Lamar to be quite this good. And along with Joe, the Baylor offense, Mims, Straight, Pierce, Miller, and Bonner, who has been phenomenal as a deep threat this year, averaging 29 yards per catch. Up front, Tap thinks Barron's as good as any center in America. He lines up opposite nose guard Matt Sine, a key for the Rice defense. And through the middle on his first carry today is Robert Straight up near midfield. The Owl defense, as we said, led by Sign along that front line, leads the defensive line with 26 tackles on the... Derek Rutherford, a late start. And Pierce in motion again straight powering to the 45 where he will be close for a first down. So those are our NCNB starting lineups today and a major key for the Rice defense is trying to cut down those thrusts up the middle by straight. Yeah, that option play starts with Robert straight up the middle. And if you concentrate on that, Joe will read that, bring the ball out, and then you've got bigger problems on the pitch. But you're right, it has to start with stopping Robert straight. Pierce again in motion, a little less than one, and on the pitch, there's Mims. Out of bounds at the 35, 11 yards for the Bears' leading rusher. Nice job by J.J. Joe running the option, reading the fullback's going to be stopped right there, reading it there, pulling the ball out, now making the flip. Just as soon as he gets hit, that's what causes the yardage to be picked up. He does that so well. Almost 
too well. There was a, a miraculous pitch he made against the Houston Cougars last week, which worked, but Joe still got a little lecture for even trying it on the sideline. This time, Min straight up the middle. And Barker closed quickly from the strong inside linebacker position for Rice. As usual, a somewhat undersized Rice defense, but their philosophy is a lot like Taft's defensive philosophy over the last few years. They will give up size in exchange for quickness, and a lot of that has to do with guarding uh, the run-and-shoot receivers who have popped up around the league. And probably the key player on their defensive line today is Matt Sign, number 96, right over the center. He has got to have a big day today. Mike McKenzie, the tight end in motion, and Joe wanted to keep, got turned inside by the defensive tackle, Charles Gulbronson, that time. Well, we just talked about Matt Sign and, and the, the uh, attention he's going to get. They're going to double him. Now watch what he has to do. He has to stay real low, double team, read the double team, spin back into the play. That's not a bad play on a double team. He's got to be tricky because he's 220 at nose guard. There aren't many that small in major college football, only 5 feet 10. Played with Joe at Arlington Lamar. On third and six, the three-step drop and incomplete along the side. Intended for Reggie Miller, the wide receiver. The Bears face with fourth down. And this is one of those decisions where it's, it's a tough decision because it's going to be an awfully long field goal if they attempt it. When the kickoff got us underway, the breeze out of the north was a lot stronger than it is at this moment, and it seems to be swirling back out of the south, but they won't mess with it. They'll go for it. will not come close on the draw play and the fired up Rice defense has held. The Owl defense bailing out the Owl offense after the first play interception by Clifford Ellison of Baylor. Dave, one of the things that we talked earlier about was Matt Sign and his small size, but he makes a great play here. Gets doubled on the pass rush, now reacts back, uses that quickness, good base, hold on. That's an excellent play. I don't care what size you are. Early on, the Dr. Pepper scoreboard revealing that surprising score in the second quarter. That also a surprise. Miami at home in the Orange Bowl where they've won 47 straight. Trevor Cobb's first carry of the afternoon, and he goes nowhere. Santana Dotson, the Outland and Lombardi Trophy candidate, leading that Baylor defense along with Jones, Lowe, and Patton, the senior starters up front. The linebackers undersized, but Maston at only 193 pounds leads the entire defense with 52 tackles, five for loss. Keith Caldwell with three interceptions leads a pretty good ball hawking secondary. Loss of one on first down for Cobb. And Willing at midfield intended for Winston Levan. Boy, and there's Santana Dotson. I want to tell you, he just did a great move. He's outside, straight up on the on the guard. And watch his little juke move inside. Boom, inside. Now he's got immediate pressure right up in Willig's face, and he has to hurry to throw. All right, we covered the swim move last week. Let's cover the juke move. <laughs> that's this a juke. <laughs> it sure is. That, that's just quickness. And that's what he plays with. He's very strong, but he plays with a lot of quickness. They send Cobb in motion. And Willig barely got it off. They have not signaled whether that's an incompletion. And the Bear defense is going to contend that was a fumble that they have recovered at the 15. However, now they do say incomplete pass. Robin Jones did the right thing. He didn't take anything for granted. Followed the ball all the way and fell on it. Well, one official on the side marked it where the ball was recovered. That's what made me think for a minute that it might have been called a fumble. Lee Miles, a track All-American at his 26-yard line. Darrell Richardson. Up, up. 
Redshirt freshman from Carrollton, R.L. Turner High School. What breeze there was in kickoff, just about gone. And a nice boot. Ellison fighting Lee Miles, and they uh, say he fair caught it at the 27 after a 41-yard kick by Richardson. Santana Dotson, the Sports Illustrated Defensive Player of the Week for his effort against Houston, up for the Outland, up for the Lombardi this year. We asked him his thoughts on those. Everything I do off season and on season, you know, I try to work and I set goals, you know, early in the season and I try to work towards them. And I think, you know, it's just mainly to what how I contribute to the team and how the team does, you know, on a, on a national standpoint as far as the national awards are concerned. Well, it's all tied together. As long as the Bears stay unbeaten, his case grows that much stronger individually. Straight on first down to the 34-yard line. On our opening, we talked about Robert Strait with that great, great recovery. Would they say he was back riding a bicycle in three days? Three days after the surgery. And they also said, as you look at the outman defensive front for Rice, Brad Taff also said if he had brought his uniform to Houston last week, he would have tried to suit up and play then. Could have started, but... They did the right thing, obviously, by holding it out, and they still won. On the pitch, Mims up the side, finally brought down out of bounds by Clifford Jackson, but he got 18. Boy, Alonzo Pierce, the tight end, throws a great block on this plate. You see it right there. You see him on 99 just driving down. Now there's no one out there. Grant Taft told me he's the most underrated player on this football team. Pierce, a senior, good enough to keep McKenzie, a junior, out of the starting lineup. Taft says McKenzie is as talented as any tight end that he thinks ever played in the conference. Definitely for him. All alone in the flat is Mims, and he tried to run before he brought it in. Nearest defender was Barker, about 10 yards away. We are pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. From Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, we are nothing, nothing, 10.06 in the first quarter. Baylor intercepted the first pass on the first play of the day for Greg Willigan Rice. Turned away on a fourth and sixth. This is their second possession of the day. And again, it is straight. And violent yards inside the 40. He's one of the best yardage after contact people in college football. That's because he has those great strong legs. When he gets hit, he just doesn't let his legs just kind of die. He just keeps on driving them and pumping them. And that's why he picks up on that play about seven, eight yards after he was hit. Fred Goldsmith said last night he just as soon play straight today coming off surgery. Then John Henry, healthy, although Henry's a good 50, 60 pounds lighter. No rust whatsoever that we can see as Straight picks up the first down at the 36-yard line. I think that's really important. I've watched Straight now for these first couple series, and I don't see there's no limp. There's no favoring of it. He's just running just like he was three weeks ago. Baylor again, well into Rice's end of the field. And with Miller and Miles wide right this time. This is Henry, and he coughs it up. And the Owls have the recovery at the 26-yard line. And it is Doug Shaw, the redshirt freshman defensive end from Miami. This is one that you'd love to have back because there was a whale of a hole. They had driven this Matt sign by, and the ball just kind of gets just poked out of there. There it's clear. The only people around it are those white shirt Rice Owls. Charles Colbronson caused it. Doug Shaw with the Owl recovery. We're back after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, each team with the turnover, and we are still scoreless with 9.17 to play in the first quarter. Doug Shaw gives his Rice offense 
another opportunity. And Rice has been a good giveaway, takeaway team this year. Certainly are. When you have that plus ratio, that's a great start. Cobb with some room to the 44 for the junior from Pasadena Dobie. 18 yards. First time he sees even the hint of a hole up the middle. He, did, he certainly did. He just burst up the hole right up the middle. There you'll see it. It's just a straight man-on-man -man blocking, and he just finds the seam. And look how big it is. He sidesteps one person and just picks up that yardage. Great explosion off the ball. Brian again, different result this time. Maston from weak side linebacker. Well, I want to tell you, Maston at 193 pounds just crushed Cobb on that play. Boy, he just, this is what you want to do if you're an outside linebacker. You crash down inside and bam, that's how you hit him. Well, Masson at 193 doesn't get to tackle many people smaller than he is. Pressure surrounding and dropping Greg Willig at the 39. Albert Fontenot. Listed as Robin Jones back up at the left defensive end, junior from Houston Yates, the same high school which produced Santana Dotson. Dave, one of the keys today is that they have got to get the ball to that man, Henley. McFarland does a great job on him. As soon as he makes his break, you'll see McFarland right there. Good man-on-man -man coverage. That's one of those secondary sacks where you just don't have any place to go. The pocket collapses around you, and down you go. Really doing well not to fumble at that time. Better protection here, lets a wobbler fly for Henley, and broken up by Caldwell. They had Henley surrounded by triple coverage that time. And the trouble for Willard this year is he doesn't have any receivers besides Henley really showing themselves as weapons. So it's easier for a secondary to zero in. Sure did, and that was not a well-delivered ball either. That ball had a high trajectory, allowed both safeties to come over and, and add that coverage on it. Miles by himself this time. Ellison out of the picture. After outfighting Miles for the fair catch on the last kick. And he trips himself at the 32. Only a 34-yard boot that time. Over the last few years, they have expended over $24 million on sports facilities at Baylor. And along with the Farrell Center, this is what they are most proud of. This is Grant Taft's baby all the way. From 1972 on, he has been designing in his head the ultimate football office and training facility. And he's finally got it. Oh, he does. The lower decks are weight rooms, locker rooms, beautiful locker rooms. He even has a senior lounge, a small chapel area. It's all his inspiration. And he says, uh, the people who think I'm winding down my coaching career are crazy. I want 10 more years to enjoy being on an equal footing facility-wise with the people that we have been chasing throughout my career. Robert Strait dropped at the 29 that time by good pursuing Al defense. I thought an interesting comment was Fred Goldsmith tore through it. He said, wow, I haven't seen a facility to even come close to matching this. So the obvious question becomes, for Taff, if you had that since 72 on, how many wins would that have been? He, he wouldn't put a number on wins, but he said, well, we now compete on an equal footing with anybody in the country. And draw your own conclusions about how many W's that may mean. Straight near the 35. And the Owls again push the Bears into a third and long. They'll need seven or eight here. This is not the first option team that the Owl defense has seen. Iowa State running a very similar attack. They prepared for James Saxton to be the Texas quarterback last week and some option preparation involved there. And Goldsmith back into his days at Arkansas as their defensive coordinator. Very well versed in solving attacks like this Baylor high formation beat. Knocked away. Great up front. Pressure by Emmett Waldron, the middle linebacker. 
He poured right through and buried J.J. Joe. And that is what Rice has got to do to stay in this football game is to come up with big defensive plays. Now they're going to get one of their better field positions so far in this first quarter, and they need to take advantage of that. Nathan Bennett at his 30, waiting for Kent Brenton's kick. He is pounded right at the 30. David Loeb got him, the backup fullback. Nothing, nothing in Waco. 5.51 in the first quarter. Scoreless in Waco. We have mentioned all the different awards that uh, this man has already won and is up for, and the Baylor publicity machine in full gear. It certainly is. Watch this little flip out here. You can see what they're advertising. Everybody's got to be different in, in the way they promote their, their All-American candidates, and that's what Maxie Parrish and company put together for Santana Dotson, a preseason All-American, preseason Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, consensus All-Conference as a sophomore and junior. Now let's go to the option. And maybe two for Cobb. Now, Willig, not the ideal option quarterback. He has improved his footwork and his quickness somewhat this year. But if he is eventually beaten out by Josh LaRocca, it'll probably be because of his lack of mobility. Well, he worked very hard in the offseason. It was an interesting training thing. They took him down on the beach and had him run in the sand to get those feet up and get a little bit more mobility. But uh, that's a tough thing to teach. This is Herschel Crow and a foot race. All the way down near the 20 before Frankie Smith runs down Crow. 44 yards on the pass and run. Dave, that was just a simple little out and in. He just kind of came down and just turned in, and the ball was just delivered as well as you can throw it. Watch this. Out pattern, bam, right in the hole. The corner really lost containment. The safety was going to come over and help him, and all of a sudden Crow turns up the middle of the field, and it's just a foot race. Just his second catch of the year, and he's got the Owls at the Baylor 25. Where Cobb is brought down on first down. This Baylor defense has not surrendered a first quarter point this year. And I can tell you that, that's something that you take a lot of pride in. Baylor owns the first period 38-0. That is somewhat in jeopardy. As we're under four and a half minutes to go in this first period. Long count. We'll look looking for Henley on the side. Inside the 15 with another Rice first down. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Crowd of over 40,000 expected at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco. They are noticeably quiet as the Owls knock on the Bears' door. Willig in the hands of Dotson, who wrestles him to the turf at the 13. Maybe a three-yard pickup for Goldsmith on first down. And one of the things that Fred Goldsmith told us is the reason he has Willig in there is he is excellent on his reads, makes great decisions, might not have that mobility of his backup, but makes good calls when he gets to the line, is able to read the defense, look and see what the coverage is, and make those adjustments. He said, well, he'll start this week, and as long as he keeps us in the game, he'll stay in. He will not commit further to his junior quarterback. Knocked away by Brian Hand, the outside linebacker. Bring up third and eight. What would this mean emotionally for this Rice team 
to get ahead of Baylor. They were giving him a big A plus on that. Keep on believing. <laughs> They do have a lot more confidence about them. You can just see it in the, in the way they handle themselves, both, both offensively and defensively. Ball at nine needed on third down. Maston coming. Cobb through the middle. Touchdown race. That was the perfect call for that defense. A blitz, a quick draw right up the middle, and it first for a touchdown. Maston vacating. Pinkston and Teichelman, the center and the left guard, clearing the space. And for Trevor Cobb, the fourth leading scorer in the nation, his biggest touchdown of the year. His ninth overall. Richardson also the placement kicker, as well as the punter, 7-0 Rice. First time anyone scores in the first quarter against the Bear defense this year. Well, once you split the line, there's Masson. Now, he's going to blitz from the outside. The play's gone. He's just wasted there. But once you split that line, look at that. Nobody even, even close to making a tackle. Just the way you draw it up. You couldn't have a better play called in that situation. It would be interesting to know if Willick made that call on the line. Tell you this, this Rice coaching staff had a lot of respect, but no fear of this Baylor team. And what a big change. They think they crossed the border from being occasionally intimidated to getting the feeling that they could play with anybody two years ago when they lost by one point on a controversial Texas touchdown in Austin. And Goldsmith says from that point forward, we have believed that we belong on the same field with whoever we might be playing. And there was no doubt last night in our meetings with Brett Goldsmith that he thought they could win. And he was almost, he was close to predicting a score. This is Miller from the two. Needed a big return and didn't get it. 21 yards. It would be easy as we check the Owl scoring drive. Seven plays over two minutes and 18 seconds. The big play, the 44-yard catch and run by Herschel Crow. It would be really easy for this Bear team to look past Rice because they've got a sold-out house already waiting here in Waco against Texas A&M next week. And of course, after beating Houston last week, this is sometimes you would think this would just be an in-between game. But I can promise you that touchdown that Rice just scored certainly will wake up this Baylor team. And straight up near the 25-yard line. Well, the usual remedy for what has happened to Baylor so far is just go to your biggest guy and exactly. let him work. Be very safe in your calls. In other words, don't take a chance forcing the ball in. Drive it down. Use the plays that are so successful. Just keep on keeping on. Second and six at the two-minute mark of the first quarter. Pitch well defended again. Mims barely back to the line of scrimmage. Alonzo Williams, ultra quick outside linebacker. Junior from Tampa, Florida. Haven't seen Melvin Bonner go to work yet so far today, but guaranteed at some point you will look for Joe hitting Bonner deep. This is what they've done so far. These are the four longest touchdown passes in the Southwest Conference this year. Bonner averaging almost 30 yards per reception. Four touchdowns. Third and seven delivery to Lee Miles. Out of one tackle. Finally, Sean Washington, but a flag. He might have grabbed the face mask. Whenever you see a head twist around like that on a, on a run, you almost always associate it with a face mask. And there's the call. That's going to hurt Rice because they had almost, well, they wouldn't have stopped him for a first down, but it's going to put him in plus yardage. 
We may see it right here. Let's see if we see the face mask. There's the face mask. See the way the head kind of just pulls around? And Bud Alexander with the five-yard mark-off. You rarely see the 15-yarder. Bud with us in uh, Lubbock for the Aggies in Tech last week. His crew this week. Half time, Florida State out of a 14 all time to lead by six. A minute 40 in the first quarter here. Here is where Joe likes to find somebody deep, and in this case, incomplete for Lee Miles. Usually he looks for Bonner on that pattern. They look for the free safety to vacate, come up and be option conscious, and then go right to where the safety left. Boy, that was great coverage, too. Man-on-man -man coverage on those two wideouts. They were not fooled by the play. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game. And a slow start for J.J. Joe. The nation's leading passer, 63% for the year, only two for six. When in doubt, ball on straight to the 44. It will be third and about four. I want to tell you, every yard that Robert Strait gets is one of those violent yards. He's getting hit right on the line of scrimmage and just pulling two or three people. You just see people kind of shedding off him as he bursts through there. Well, he was hit by a guy who can match him, one of the few on the Al defense who can match Robert Strait pound for pound, Sean Alberting at 6'4", 260. The biggest Owl defensive starter. Joe for the tight end and caught in Owl territory. Washington making the tackle at the 48-yard line on Steve Stutzman. And this is just great eye coordination with J.J. Joe and Stutzman. Now watch what he's going to do. Three-step drop. He knows the cornerback's already given too much of a cushion, and he throws it immediately. The eye contact was when Stutzman looked back at him and said, hey, I've got about five, six yards. I can just go down here and just throw me a strike quickly. Third catch of the year for Stutzman, the senior from Dangerfield. He had three all of last year. Pierce went in motion, draw, play to Nim. Nice cutback. And the Owls saying that they have the recovery. We'll see if Bud Alexander agrees. Bears say if he dropped it, it was after the tackle. And still bare ball. 40 seconds in the quarter. I didn't see it pop out. Must have been at the bottom of the pile. I think it was. It Watch Mims here when he turns back inside. See if you see the ball come out now, right? Oh, the ball is out before his knee is down, Dave. I was looking at his right knee, and it didn't look as if his right knee was down. That is uh, the definitive angle, and that was a fumble by Mims. Huge break for Baylor. McKenzie in motion, straight. I don't think got the first down. He needed the 38. Well, maybe we can take another look at it. Let's see if his knee is down. You can see the knees right there. Now it's not down. See, the ball is out before his right knee is on the ground. It's close. What might that have meant emotionally to Rice? As it is, they're the first team this year to lead Baylor at the end of one. Number eight, Baylor, 5-0, and a 20-point favorite over Rice, trailing 7-0. Their ball at the Owl 39-yard line as the second quarter gets underway. And on third and one, who else do they go to? Straight has the first down if the play stands. Two flags on what will either be offsides, Owls, or illegal procedure, Bears. First quarter numbers. It is offsides, Owls. On the ground... Cobb, six carries, 28 yards. 18 of those came on one carry. 118 to 79. 44 of those 79 uh, total yards for Rice on the throw catch and run that set up their touchdown. Look at time of possession, too. Almost two to one. Nine, nine and a half minutes to five and a half. But the score is so much more important. Seven nothing. Well, the last 
last two years, this has been a tough hurdle for Baylor to overcome. They lost here 6-3 in the rain two years ago to Rice. They survived by one at Rice Stadium last year. Straight to the 30. I don't know if he's broken one for longer than about six, seven yards, but he is piling them up slowly and surely. 11 carries now for 43 yards for Strait. You almost get the feeling that you could go every play to Robert Strait and get that three to four yards and just keep on going all the way downfield. The people in the middle of the Rice defense go 220 for Sign, 225 for Gold Bronson, and 215 for the middle linebacker, Wheeler. Nobody in Straits' neighborhood in terms of raw power. Joe Chase down, dropped Matt Sign, showing that incredible upfront quickness. And there's a person whose leg locked up on him early in the week in practice. He was, he, they said it was locked up for a couple hours, and he couldn't even move the thing, and then all of a sudden it just kind of broke free or something happened, something moved. And look at that speed down the line by Sign. Yeah, they had kind of a faith healing because the original diagnosis was that he had torn his medial collateral ligament, which, had that been correct, would have meant he's out for the year. And Fred Colesman said, wait a minute, we're going to say a prayer before we go with that diagnosis. They looked at it the next day and they said, nope, just a bad sprain. Put well, him in a brace, here he is. They turned around and said, well, the prayer worked. <laughs> and a timeout with 13-22 in the second quarter. Bears have a third and ten to discuss, trailing seven to nothing. Here's today's game, Tracer, brought to you by the Schick Tracer. Cobb with 28 yards and a touchdown. Baylor stopped on the fourth down at the 30-yard line. And Joe, nation's leading passer, yet to get on track today. 7 to nothing. after the timeout, Baylor has the plan on third and 10. Three receivers right, straight to lone setback, and Joe over the middle for Mims. He may take a while to get up, Nathan Bennett laid him out. Boy, he had to reach real, real high for the ball, and that stretched him out. You have, to, you have to admire the courage of a wide receiver to go across that middle, reach high for that ball, and get stuck by Nathan Bennett. And then the concentration, Dave, to hold on to the football. Now the seam is open right down the middle. There he is. Now watch how high he has to go for it and watch the contact. Bam! Boy, old Bennett hits. He doesn't hit like a running back anymore, does he? No, the comparison was to Steve Atwater. That's a big-time hit. And that's a big-time comparison, too. Goldsmith had Atwater as an Arkansas assistant. Bennett doesn't have that type size at only 5'11", 185, and Mims getting a hand as he tries to come to his senses. What a hit he took after a gain of 21 yards. To his credit, he held on to the ball. Yeah, that's the big thing, holding on to that football. And you can bet when they watch these films, that's the first thing they say. Great concentration, way to squeeze the football and keep it in there. Fake to straight, the new tailback is Greg White from Waco High, junior, 5'7 and 185 with his ninth carry of the year. You know, with this little st stack eye formation, there's Pierce. He goes in motion, now watch him. He's a big person. If he can make this block, and he does, he just nails him inside. Boy, that opens up the running lane outside. He's held Tony Barker in check, and they think he may be the most underrated member of their offense, Alonzo Pierce. Only top four balls. What they mainly call on him to do is what you just saw him do. Eight needed. Joe at the 12, under wraps. Waldron with his second big stop. Redshirt freshman from Cypress Creek. Joey Wheeler's back up at the middle linebacker spot. Also, Derek Rutherford. And Tap will shuttle in the play with wide receiver Reggie Miller. But they're going to use their second timeout. 
And trailing 7 to nothing with 11.53 in the first half. They haven't shown many tricks. They, they had a reverse for a touchdown at Houston last week. They had Lee Miles, a left-handed high school quarterback, throw off a reverse last week. And the more you use plays like that, obviously the more uh, your opposition is attuned to it, they can prepare for it. So would you expect anything out of the ordinary here? Well, I think what they were going trying to do is come up with a safe play. What happens is when you get down inside the 15-yard line, all of a sudden the back line of the end zone becomes like a defensive player. You can't run them off. And they're really at a critical point because it's third down about nine, and they're on the 14-yard line. So you just can't run anybody deep, and you've got to be real, real sure of what you call. What he's called this year has mainly worked. He has the best offense in the conference, and that's the 10th best in the nation. 481 yards per game for Baylor. Rice sixth in the conference, just under 366. Dave, I want to tell you this. Rice cannot play any better defense than what they have played through the first part of this football game. They're swarming all over the field. They're getting great play by sign, by their linebackers. Their coverage has been excellent. If they can keep this pitch up and this level of play, they can be in this football game and even win it. Robert Strait bounces off the pile and scores. Real fancy. <laughs> Real fancy. Real sure. Well, everybody's thinking a run, I mean, a pass on this play. I was thinking pass, too. Fifth touchdown of the year for the sophomore from Cuero, Jeff Ireland, to attempt the game-tying extra point. Brentham the holder. 7-7. Seven, when you're tight and compact like Robert Strait is, you've got about 250 pounds on that little short body. He's just like a ball. You can't get your arms around him. Great block in here. And watch him. Just bam. Kick on the outside. Little block there. Now he's just going to crush over top of the corner. Boom. I'm just going in there. Nobody stops me. That's a good block by Miller. That's what you call a get in the way block. Just enough to tie him up so he's not able to come forward and make a, try to make a tackle. So they finally have reason to cheer at Floyd Casey Stadium. Their Bears have pulled even with the upset minded Owls and will be back after this from Southwest Airlines. Judge the Bear. For a celebratory snap. 7 7 game. And this is Crow from the one. Ferris Walker with the tackle at the 22-yard line. Owls back at square one after a seemingly endless, to them, scoring drive of 14 plays in nearly seven minutes. And you made a good point uh, about Straits conditioning. Dave, because the guy who's been off 11 days, 12 carries already for 55 yards. At what point do you think the win becomes a factor, or is it already a factor oh, for it's, him? it's already a factor. Just watching him on the sideline sweat as profusely as he was shows that he's, he's laboring. He'll get that second win, though. Trevor Cobb again, room in the middle. Ellison gives chase. And McFarland knocks him out of bounds. On that one carry, he has more yards than he had last year in the entire Baylor game. He busts this one for 43. Well, they say he runs one speed in practice full out. Every play, he runs 30 to 40 yards, and this is why. Watch once he breaks through here, makes a nice cutback against the grain to avoid one of the tacklers, turns that corner, and there's that speed. He's just given everything he has every play. You can't tire him out. 
He has carried as many as 42 times, and he's as fresh on the 42nd as he is on the first. He spins inside the 25 for another Rice first down. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom network. What a show the headline running backs are putting on for us. Robert Strait and Trevor Cobb. We for a good crowd on a perfect oh, a little bit warm football afternoon in Waco. Powell's one timeout before a first and ten play. Willard to confer on the sideline after Cobb went for 43, followed by 35 yards. Nice if you're Goldsmith to know that you got a guy who you can run up to 40 plus times per game and you just can't wear him down. Now these are the career records he has already set. 2,617 rushing yards, a career record as well as attempts with the 23rd touchdown of his career today. He breaks a tie, has that record by himself. He is well on his way to his 11th 100 yard day and already three 200 yard days, just a junior. And you're starting to hear talk mainly aimed toward next year about Trevor Cobb of the Heisman Trophy and Bill Cousins, the Rice Sports Information Director, said I couldn't in all good conscience with David Klingler a few miles away promote him as a potential Heisman winner this year, but he's already laying the seeds for next year. Oh, and he is. He's got great work habits, which are, they just come just so in light. When, when he runs like that and he's able to burst, it shows that he's got that durability. We talked about him only being 5'9", 180 pounds, averaging 32 carries a game. And until last week, averaging 216 yards per game. Texas holding him to what they did on 28 carries, 68 yards. Dropped that average down to 179, but he still leads the world. So try him again. And to the 17. Still good first down yardage. And the original plan was short passes to open up room for Cobb. At this point, Cobb may be setting up the passing game with what he's done on this drive. Well, one of the things that Rice is doing is taking a little bit wider splits, and they're causing Baylor to be a little bit wider in their defensive alignment, and then if they get that split, he just slides through it. This time to the 15. Bring up third and probably about three. Now, the one thing that Rice does not want to do right here, Dave, is miss this scoring opportunity. This is huge. Your defense just held Baylor all the way down the field, gave up a touchdown, but now your offense has come all the way back down the field, so you've got that momentum back. Draw play, room to the outside, cut back, buried by Maston. Boy, and what Maston does is the perfect form tackle breaks down now this is cop it's it's what they call reverse action it goes one way and it cuts back you see Mastin just get in there he's got a nice low base he's got those feet wide apart and he just drives them in the ground the Baylor tackling leader out of Dallas Carter had Cobb popped outside I'm not sure he then could have eluded Mastin he's about as quick as Cobb they'll go for the field goal 33 yards for Richardson for the lead. That is his longest this year. Ten seven rights. Important, as you said, to get something out of that. Oh, drive. yes. When you're in that situation and you're the underdog, as big an underdog as Rice is coming into this football game, you have got to capitalize on every scoring opportunity. So that was a good safe call on third down. Pick up the field goal, accept the three points, and take the lead. Keep in mind the people that they're doing this against. This Baylor rushing defense not only leads the conference, but sixth in the nation at 79 yards allowed per game. And today, they have already allowed 89. And one of many records 
that the Bears are on pace to break is their record in 1986 of allowing an average of 89 yards per game. An average 10 yards better than that coming into this one. Richardson will kick to either Miles or Miller. Neck-high tackle. Make it Shane Holas, 88 rather than 89. And yeah, that's Holas and not Hollis. You've got Donald Hollis, who graduated after a marvelous career as the Al quarterback. This is his cousin, but their fathers pronounce the name differently. The Hollis side has Donald. The Holas side of the family has Shane. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up. I was thinking about do it, but, uh, doing that, but I'm glad you took over. <laughs> Bears trailing by three. They spent most of the day trailing. And Joe delivers to Bonner into Rice territory. Twenty five yards on Melvin Bonner's first catch of the day and it was just a curl pattern He's gonna run down here and try to get between the seam on the up front and back defense and just turn it inside little curl He almost breaks out of this watch if he is able to get one more step There was no one there to catch him not with 4-2 speed 4-2 to 40 White remains the tailback. We haven't seen Mims since Nathan Bennett rung his bell. Well, really important now, the sign of a good team, and this Baylor team is a, an outstanding team, is to not panic in this situation. I know they're in shock a little bit because Rice has moved the ball well against them, but they need to get back into their offensive flow. Don't panic. Use those plays that have worked so well for them all year. Panic time a long way away. We've got 8.15 to go second quarter. Owls on top, 10-7. Joe still with it. Looks Bonner's way, goes to the short man, and it's the tight end McKenzie at the 30. This is the most difficult pass to make for a quarterback, especially a right-handed quarterback who runs left because he has to throw actually across his body. The fake doesn't really hold anybody. You can see that there's white shirts out there, but now he has to square up and look at that. Almost kind of like he flips it out to the side. Sure makes it look easy. That's why they call him magic. Fourth catch of the year from McKenzie, the junior from San Antonio. There's March from the Owl, 30. Great for a couple of yards. The word on David Mims is a bruised shoulder, and that took the brunt of that Nathan Bennett head first hit. Probably will return. I can tell you the most tired people up front are going to be those ones for Rice because they are taking a pounding every play. We talked about the weight disadvantage that they're against, but boy, they are playing hard football up front. Not quite as deep as they hope to be up front this year. Straight again, ball look to pop out. Owls may have it. At the 23, they do. The Bears turn it over again, and it's Terry Thornton with the Owl recovery. Boy, and that is so uncharacteristic of a Grant Tab team. They just do not fumble the football. You see, the ball just comes out here when he tries to stretch. There's the ball out. The Owls being very opportunistic. Boy, to stop a drive like that, they've just driven 30, 40, 50 yards, and now all of a sudden they're in four-down territory, and they have to give it up on a turnover. That one Rice turnover was the first play of the game when Willard was intercepted by Ellison. Owls going to work, and again, the middle open 
for Trevor Cobb and another nice chunk of yards. 15 this time. He may get 100 by halftime. Vision. Boy, this is a great test of vision. Watch this. You're not going to see a hole now. Look where he sees it. Way back to his left. That play is designed to go off the right tackle. Then again, tries to make a cut around. But boy, he runs with his eyes open. There are two things. In fact, he's out over 100 yards. There are two things that they love about him. The endurance we've talked about. The vision is the other. Stop for no gain by Marcus Lowe, the left tackle, senior from Houston Northbrook. And Dave, that's just something that you can't coach a player to have, not to have that vision where you've, you've got a full vision of what holes are going to open up. You just can't coach that. You can't tell somebody, always be looking to the back side for that hole that opens up in the on the offside. That's just something that you either have or you don't have. Well, the play clock still shows eight seconds. So uh, this should not be delayed game. 607 and a half. It is procedure Rice, and it looked like Herschel Crow moving. And on a day where you're playing number eight in the country, you can't afford even the little mistakes. But that's their third penalty. Throw and Henley left. And Willard deflected and it comes down right into the hands of Ed Howard who was by himself on the right side of that formation. True freshman from Willis, Texas. Good thing he's 6'4". He would be tough to outjump on one like this. Well, watch how wide open he is. That's, this ball is hit. It's going to be a stop and go. The cushion is way far back. Look how he's just kind of circling underneath it. It was such a wobbly pass. Willie's arm got hit in the throw. It must have gone 75 feet in the air. Picked up nine there. They still need six. They call on Cobb, and Brian Hand hits him head on. At the 46, where they will still lack about three. Hand, one of the two below 200-pound linebackers, along with Maston. He goes 6'4", 196. Versatile throughout his career at Baylor. He's played all three linebacker spots. And a new punter for the Owls. Sam Baldwin, left foots it up, gets the hop. And this one goes inside the 10-yard line all the way down to the 6. 47 yards with the roll for Baldwin. Rice with that surprising 10-7 lead as we get late first half. And after the Baldwin punt, Bears go from their six-yard line. And again, that ball knocked over the hands of Robert Strait. Did Rice get it again? They say they did. They didn't. Second down, but boy, on consecutive carries for Strait to drop it, well, that unheard may be, of. That's a, that may be a little sign of the rust that you talked that we hadn't seen. And that's getting that ball and squeezing it in. But more so, I think it might, might be the Rice defender just sticking him right on the ball, putting his helmet right on the football. Boy, there's been three or four plays that could, could have Rice way out in front. That early fumble that wasn't called. This fumble here had to been a fumble. Wow. Here's in motion. White will run behind him and not reach the 10-yard line. First man there was Bennett, who was having an all-world first half for Rice. Well, one of the reasons he's having an all-world is that they are putting double teams on sign, and Barron just doubles him here. Look at this. Look at Barron, the center, just pushes him down. Boom. But that leaves someone else in single blocking, and he recovers, and boy, Rice is playing exceptional, emotional football. Here 
Bears with only one timeout remaining. And down near three minutes remaining in the first half. Joe in and out of the hands of White out of the backfield. Plenty of room had he brought it in. All year long, they have looked for the back straight up the middle out of the backfield. A lot of times it's been straight. This time it was White. I thought for a minute it might have been deflected. Let's see if the hand gets on it. Yeah, the hand did get on it. Tony Barker. Yes, Barker recovering across there. I thought the ball, the trajectory of the ball looked like it spun a little bit. So Brentham, whose first kick went only 38 yards, will kick to Bennett standing at midfield under some pressure, gets it off, and it is a beauty and a fair catch for Bennett at his 47-yard line. 43 yards under that pressure for Kent Brentham. And now the Owls, with two timeouts, two minutes and 51 seconds in the half, have got to be thinking 17-7 halftime. At 17-7 or at least 13-7. What you want to do in this situation, if you're Rice, your team has played far above what they, what they could normally play. You want to make a safe drive and get some points. Coming up at the half, here's what we've got for you. Another Southwest Conference, Southwest Airlines trivia tester, Dave Campbell of Texas Football Magazine with the Waco Tribune Herald to talk about how good this Baylor year has been so far. Cobb off tackle. Near midfield. They have found a way to make him a factor again. And they had to wonder because Texas was able to, uh, with their great front four, always keep him pinched in and, and deny him that room outside. Most of the yards have been up the front uh, in this game today. Right, right up through the middle. middle. Yeah, when he's, when he's broken his long runs, both of them have been on those seams where it's just kind of split and he scooted through it. Oh, almost dropped it, but he's got a first down at the Baylor 38. Had a 44-yarder earlier. This one goes for 13. Interesting formation. Then they ran Cobb out of the backfield, so there was no one to hand that football off. They put Crow out there and just let him break inside right into the post, and bam, hit him right away. Good call. Block rolls at the two-minute mark. Cobb bouncing off one tackle and finally hand, wrapping him up at the 33-yard line. And on Cobb's 16th carry of the half, he's got 116 yards. The Owls will burn their second timeout. What about calling it with that much time remaining? Well, that's an interesting call because what you would normally think is you would call them as you got down close. But the Rice Owls are being very conservative on this drive. They want to utilize all the clock. If they get a chance for a touchdown, yes, take it. But if not, they don't want to give Baylor any time to come back with a late flurry, especially knowing the strength of J.J. Joe and the Bonner hookup. Well, you think of Rice as a young developing team. Not all that young. Now, this is total letters. Among returning starters in the conference this year, Texas the most returning letters, Baylor second, Rice third. Bit of a surprise. And they're really pointing to next year. Rice with only 13 seniors this year, 24 juniors, 10 starters among those 24 juniors. Close to 500, breaking the 500 barrier and going 6-5 and five last year. They think they can do it again this year, but next year is the year they think they might be able to pull something along the lines of what Grant Taft pulled here in 1974 for Baylor, the miracle on the Brazos year. Certainly was to upset Texas. That gave them instant credibility. They went on, and of course, they've developed their program to what it is today. Second and five. Well, a great leg drive that time by Cobb. Maston finally had enough leverage to send him down at the 31. Third down and two. Now you don't want to get too conservative in this in this drive. It's two minute 30. You've got a chance to get a touchdown. You've got to be thinking touchdown and accept the field goal. Call it three where they mark it. Under a minute and a half in the half. And Willard with the audible. Time delivers, caught Howard. And Ed Howard with a first down, 15 yards. Well, what happened on that coverage is Willie took a lot of time, but Brian Hand fell down on the coverage. He had him out of the backfield and actually slipped in the turf 
That allowed him to get that pass completion. Chains are set, clock rolls. No huddle, Trevor Cobb off tackle. Still going. And not quite in. They will mark him at the one foot line. Like that rabbit on the battery commercials. <laughs> well, there was a, again, a, just a little tiny crack that just developed in there, and you're right. Boom, boom, boom. He just kept on a going. Watch a little tiny seam right there. He just scoots through it. Now watch at the tail end. Watch how many people are trying to push him over. Watch this. Push him over. Push him over. Quarterback sneak for Willig. No indication yet. There it is. Touchdown, Rice. And a stunned buzz through Boy. Floyd Casey Stadium. I mean, everyone in the stadium is stunned here. 20-point underdogs have come in, and they're going to take a 10-point lead going in at halftime? Wow, I can tell you this. The Baylor locker room will be the quietest place that you've ever seen. Richardson's extra point. 17-7. You really think it'll be quiet? Think Grant Taff will be quiet? Yes, I do, because his team is stunned. I think he's stunned. He had great respect for this Rice team, but I just don't think he felt that they would come out here and be able to run the football like they did, have done and their defense play at the level that they've been playing. That's what's been amazing to me, is their defense has controlled this football game. But I can tell you this, the stunned will be over in about 30 seconds. And then that man will get right down to work as to what they have to do. Well, we mentioned earlier they hadn't surrendered a first quarter point all year. Rice the first to break that barrier in the second quarter this year. Baylor 47, the opponents 21. They're not used to being challenged in the first half. And not only are they challenged, they're at a 10 point hole at home. 39 seconds still to go in the half. Well, I know the first thing fans will raise is, are they looking ahead to Texas A&M? I can tell you, I don't believe that's one of the problems that, that at least the coaches indicated that they were not. They said, hey, we prepared all week for Rice. We have great respect for Rice. But that's the first thing you have to look at and say, well, what do you think? Good high kick to the six, Miles. Alonzo Williams with the ankle tackle as he reached the 25. 21-yard return for Miles after the most recent Owl scoring drive. Goes seven plays over two minutes and 12 seconds. We thought we might have seen Josh LaRocca, the true freshman backup quarterback for Rice. He has not begun to get off the bench because Greg Willick has been extremely solid, which is really what they needed in this situation. They needed... Somebody to know what audibles to call when. Knowledge of situational football, the best thing Willard brings to the table. And in and out of the hands of Reggie Miller. Well, whether they were looking ahead or not, this is the best place to play Baylor on their schedule. Emotional win over Houston last week. A lot of talk about how the a &M game is already sold out for next week. And you wouldn't be human if you didn't think about both those games. On play action, Potter brings it in. And continues near midfield with 20 seconds. Bears have only the one timeout left. You know, I was going to say when this drive started, I was going to say, you know, this is not a run them into the line, give up offense. Not at this situation. Not with the arm of J.J. Joe. He can wing it out there in a hurry and get you in at least field goal position. Clock rolling, 15 seconds. Again, play action. And this is Alonzo Pierce, the tight end. He'll be close for a first down. They will stop the clock with eight seconds remaining for the measurement. And whether he's got the first down or not, doesn't matter so much as the fact that they will have time to go deep at least once more. I think Baylor called timeout on this play. They've used that last timeout. 
They would have they would have stopped the clock had they had to measure it. But I see their trainers are out on the field. So I think that's a charge timeout. That'll put them out of timeouts. A moment ago, 22 yarder Joe to Bonner. Well, that's a pretty pass. Bonner, I'll tell you, with this speed he has, he almost comes out of these things. He's got great agility to jump around. A couple of years ago, he might have dropped that ball. They say the biggest improvement he has made is in the hands department. Well, in this situation, Dave, with six, I guess that's six seconds. <laughs> if my eyes are serving me right, it's six or eight. <laughs> I think it's eight seconds. Yeah, I believe it is, too. And that may make a difference, those yeah, two. It certainly could. What you're going to want to do is you're going to run a sideline pattern. You're looking to run a sideline pattern or go all the way to the end zone. Something where you can get out of bounds and stop the clock. Well, they've got Bonner to the short side of the field. Miles to the right side of the field. Along with Miller. And Joe all day. Underthrown with two seconds remaining at the 10-yard line. Well, do you try a 58-yard field goal? Well, we saw Ireland kick a 50-yarder that would have been good from 60 in Dallas two weeks ago, and they think he might be able to do it here. Wind out of the north picking up again. It was nine miles an hour at kickoff, and it's behind Jeff Ireland. From 58 yards. Yeah. What a kick. But it's not a club record. Do you believe that? 58 yarder within two yards of Bubba Hicks kick of 60 against Rice in 1975. And that is exactly what Baylor needed to get some momentum back in this football game. What a reaction by Ireland. Ireland who beat Colorado with a last second field goal. 58 yards here. 17 10 at halftime. 17-10, Rice for the second time in three years, trying to pull the upset in Waco over the number eight Bears. For this to happen, you got to assume that Trevor Cobb would play a big role, and he has. Oh, he's played a huge role. He started off very quickly picking up big yardage, and uh, in fact, ran for that first touchdown just right up the middle. It was on a blitz, and they, they read the blitz perfectly, and he just burst up the middle for the touchdown. That was on a third and nine. Main weapon on the ground after surgery only 11 days ago has been Robert Strait, third and eight. He will bounce off the pile, go outside, and score the Baylor touchdown. It was really an interesting call because, it, as you say, it was third and eight. Everybody was thinking pass, and they run it in. And, I mean, he just plows over at the end here for the touchdown. Cobb not finished. He would set up the Owls at the one-yard line, from which point Willig would carry it over on the quarterback keeper. Well, he doesn't need a big hole to run through. He just needs a little tiny crack, and he got all the way down to the one-yard line. Of course, Willie took it over with that quarterback sneak. 17-10 Owls, our Budweiser top 10 report, number one. Struggled a little bit early with Virginia Tech, now comfortably in command of the third. Penn State, Miami in the fourth. Miami by 13, Toledo at Washington later. And Tennessee, Florida will play this evening. Michigan, Michigan State, always a good battle. Michigan way ahead in that one, 28 to 7. Texas and OU to kick it off in about 45 minutes. And number seven, Notre Dame with a 14 nothing lead over number 12, Pitt in the second quarter. That's our Budweiser Top 10 report. Seventeen ten. Rice with the surprising seven point halftime lead over number eight Baylor. The halftime statistics really summed up in one number, three turnovers for Baylor. And a lot of balance there. Really by uh, Rice equaling Baylor's output in the first half. And out rushing him 132 to 119. 
132 all by Trevor Cobb on 18 carries and a touchdown. We'll be ready for the start of the second half when we come back. Well, this score going out around the country, no doubt sending some shock waves through college football, but we've got 30 more minutes to go. A long way for the Owls, who lead 17 to 10. Come on, Reggie, bring it out, go with it. Reggie Miller from the goal line. Owls had a wall waiting for him at the 20. And an 18-yard return for Miller as we check the Baylor first half possession chart. Unlike them to fumble it three times, they actually fumbled four. They recovered one of their own. And the extended 14 play drive was Baylor at their best. And look where they started all their drives, back on the 30. So they've uh, had long drives. J.J. Joe in the first half, eight for 15, 120 yards. And as usual, not intercepted. Wilfred Jackson catches up to him at the 38-yard line. He gets 20 here. And that's actually a victory for the Rice defense because that's the play where normally Bonner goes for 70-plus. You can see the respect that they're giving Bonner. They're giving him about a 12-yard cushion. And that play has been there all day long. You just wonder when he's going to do that little hitch. They're going to come up, and he's going to take off. Well, settling for short yardage there probably setting up eventually Bonner going deep Joe in trouble got away from Barker on the blitz picked off and the Owls have their fourth takeaway Clifford Jackson's first interception of the year and this is one that you have got to just take a deep breath and sometimes stay down with the ball what happened Joe was under a lot of pressure and then when he dropped back you're gonna see he's really in the grasp right here he's in the grass but he breaks free and then just throws it as hard as he can thinking he can make up and he doesn't so a Baylor team on the year plus 11 in the turnover category minus three today Pop, maybe one off left tackle what defensive adjustments do you expect Baylor to make after watching him have the first half he had? Well, I think they're going to try to get more penetration in the middle because Cobb has really hurt them in the middle. Once he's been able to break up the middle, he's into the secondary and they're not able to bring him down. So I would look for Baylor to tighten up those two inside men, Lowe and Dotson, take that away and force them wide. how you take it away the rice first half possession chart nothing to look at until that seven play drive and then they got it cranked up and you could see the confidence grow with every possession after that seven play touchdown drive by that point they figured out they could play with the bears third and a long throw well they're changing the play on the line the blitz comes, he will let it go for throw, out of bounds, incomplete. And Floyd Casey Stadium, 40,000 plus on their feet for the Baylor defense. Yeah, they realize that Baylor, being the team that's supposed to win this football game, needs to take charge of it, and they need something to happen emotionally. Best kick of the day by Richardson. Miles over the shoulder. That's a clip. And four different officials saw it. It was that obvious. 46-yard kick. And uh, about to have 15 yards tacked on for the clip. Well, if I remember one thing John Madden told me, it was don't block them if you can see their name. And this is a clip. This is only going to compound Baylor's poor field position. No return, really good coverage. Clip, there's one of the clips. There were about four flags on it. I think they could have picked out at least two.
Big difference here. Bud Alexander will stop the ball at the 17. Still 33-14 for Florida State in the fourth quarter. This figured to be a day where Baylor could pass some, to some people. You're starting to get top 10 versus top 10 matchups. Robert straight through the first line and again drops the ball, but I believe they rule him down. Well, you can see one of the defensive backs come in there. Wasn't trying to tackle Robert Strait. What he did is he ripped the football out at the last possible minute. I didn't think Strait was down, but evidently the officials said his forward momentum was stopped. But watch the uh, defensive back, and I didn't see which one it is. Just rip the football. That's ripping the football out. Sean Washington, and he recovered it. That's a heads-up play. Well, somebody's finally found a way to defend Robert Strait. You can't uh, bring him down, and very few people can. Just make sure he doesn't have the ball when he comes down. Just hold on long enough to pull it out. And with that second and third effort, he got enough to call for a measurement. When this is that classic waist down, second down a foot. You know you can make that on third down. This is the time if you're going to use that gimmick, that reverse or that throwback pass where you have Mims last week where he ran back across the momentum and, and threw back across the field. This is where you would use it. Nothing gimmicky here. They will settle for the easy first down by straight. Well, uh, Professor Rowe attaching a failing grade. They didn't uh, in any way, shape, or form control Trevor Cobb. No, not with 130-some yards. And the Aggies are next week. I don't know yet whether they're looking ahead, but that sure seems as if it's an obvious conclusion. Be patient on offense. They've driven the ball well. They have a lot of yards, so I give them a B on being patient on offense. The tailback is still Greg White. We were told that after Mims bruised the shoulder in the first half, he could return, but he hasn't so far. So White, who had carried only eight times coming into this game, getting a lot of work. Now, what about Rice's report card in the first half? Well, it's going to be a little bit different. They have used the short passes. Willick has been very effective, and they obviously have set up the run. Keep J.J. on the sidelines. They haven't really done that, but what an A-plus for to continue to believe that they can compete, not only compete, but win. This is John Henry. Touchdown. by Fred Goldsmith come back to, to loon out there. Gosh, knows. He said, I'd rather play against Robert Strait Hurt than John Henry Well. Yeah, he said that last night. Our eyes kind of perked up because I don't think any coach would ever make that statement, but you just saw what he was talking about. Henry breaks a 64-yarder, and Ireland ties the game. But one of the things that really helped this play for Baylor is that Matt Sign went away from the play, and they actually ran the ball, just burst up the middle. Now he's in the secondary, and with his speed, he just outruns everybody. Nobody gets close to him. But Sign guessed or had an assignment to go one way. Watch him in the middle. You see, he just goes completely out of the play. And boom, he's in the secondary, and that's the strike up the band. That's that barren matchup. Against the nose guard, also turn paw the left guard, helping clear sign out of the way. And John Henry has tied the score early in the third quarter. Ireland, a low driving kick. And Crow watches it 
become a touchback. Previous longest run in John Henry's career was 35 yards. This one goes 64. Caps a quick four-play drive, beginning at the Baylor 17. And the first guy to greet Henry and congratulate him off the bench, the man he replaced, Robert Strait. Will Smith trying to do it Rice, what Taft has already done at Baylor. You see him talking to his defense there. Listen, our offense is playing hard. We've got to stay in this football game. Willig way behind Crow. He did an inning when Willig expected an outing. And let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe in cloudless Waco, Texas. Warm and breezy, 17-17. After the Bears came in a solid three-touchdown favorite. Willig, this time complete to Ed Howard. And the true freshman has the first down at the 34, pick up a 15. Ellison on the tackle. And I already see those defensive adjustments that Baylor has made. Both tackles, even though they line up on the guards, are slanting inside, shutting down that inside. They're so aware that that's where Cobb has made those big runs. They're going to shut them down inside, force them wide. Howard outside of Eric Henley wide left. Crow is wide right. Might get a safety blitz here. They do. Willing does well to pick up maybe two yards. For a guy not known for his quickness of foot, he salvages something out of that first down play. Well, they're trying to take the game away from Rice right now. They're just trying to say, hey, we're going to shut down your run. We're going to force you to pass. We think we can match up better in the passing. If they can just take Trevor Cobb out of the game, they've got a huge amount of yardage out of it. The last instant got it off to his tight end, Tim Wynn, his first catch of the day. He came in as the Owls' second leading receiver behind Henley. Dave, one of the people that's really played hard today and well is Trey Teichelman, 67. He's had Dotson every time. That's a good block right there. Stay in front of him, keep those hands inside the body, up in his chest. All right, we already talked about Hollis and Hollis. Teichelman. And his brother is Tackleman at a &M. Please explain that to me. Oh, you're going to let me explain that one right after this play. Trevor Cobb, second chance, Barry. You talk about running into a stone wall. That's what the middle is, a stone wall. That's Santana Dotson in there. There's Hafford. They're just saying, you ain't coming up this middle. You're going to have to go wide, and he just smothers them. The web is tightening. Well, I can tell you they made some great adjustments at halftime. Miles from his 18. Oh, as he dragged back. 42 yards on the kick. And uh, the coverage by Emmett Waldron, who has had a big day. Next week, maybe for the last time, Texas and Arkansas is definitely the last time they'll get together as Southwest Conference opponents. And the most storied traditional rivalry in the history of this league wrapping up in Little Rock. Hope you can join us next week. Boy, and I hate to see great rivalries go down the drain. And that one has been a fabulous rivalry. Back in is straight. And he moves the pile forward about 15 yards. <laughs> Again, straight. It looks like he comes in contact on the line. And watch this. He's going to get the football. Watch where he comes in the first contact. Now, right in here. Boom. There's one. He sheds him off. Two, three. He's just pushing fours back on him. Five, six. Boy, it's just like it's like an avalanche. Just keep on rolling along. 
We wondered in the first half about his endurance, and I think as a nod to that factor, they're alternating him every other play with Henry. Here in the second half, again, big yardage all the way to midfield. You know the thing I noticed right away, it's a different Baylor team in the second half. There's not a whole, it's almost like they've gotten serious about this football game. Not a lot of show and go, just solid smack face football. Big man on big man and just drive blocking them and we're just going to take the fight out of them. Smack face football, a yeah. distant cousin of smash face Yeah, it's football. just, well, it's, a, it's kind of like smash face football. You just get up there, big man on big man and drive them off the ball. Straight turn, and he pushes forward into Al territory. Did you see how quickly Rice came down and collapsed the middle? Now's the time when Joe was so effective, pulling that ball out and flipping it wide. Eight forty in the third, 17-17 game. Rice briefly led by 10, 17-7, but on the last play of the first half, a 58-yard career-best field goal by Jeff Ireland, third longest in Baylor history, made it a seven-point game at intermission. Henry for 64 yards, tied it. And Bonner again for short yardage. Haven't sprung him deep yet, but they keep setting that possibility up with patterns like this. Well, these are set-up passes. They'll take this all day long. The cushion is the distance between the receiver and the defensive back. And you can see Bonner just comes off five to seven yards. The cushion goes back. Now he recovers, but that's just toss and catch. That's easy. As soon as you come up and try to cover him, though, Bam, he's gone down the sideline. We had nine catches at Houston last week. They were giving him a nice 10, 15-yard cushion as he's getting here from Antonio Wilson. Full back straight ahead on third and one for the first down. But a flag down. They give straight to 37 if the play stands. It won't. Boy, on third and one, that'll sure cost you to cause you to put your hands on your hips and go, mm, boys. You pick up a first down, now you give it back. Now it's third down and six. You're going to have to almost assuredly pass the ball. Coaches don't like that. Not that many penalties on either side of the ball today. Turnovers have been the problem for Baylor. They've had four. Joe on the quarterback draw on third and six. First down. Wilson and Wheeler on the stop. That's a well set up play. It certainly is. Everyone's thinking pass. And it is. It's, it's a pass look, but it is a design draw. You go back seven yards, set up. Let those big offensive linemen clear him out for you. He makes a nice miss there. He causes someone to miss. And this is where you put your kind of put your uh, heart in your throat saying, mm, just get down. You've got enough yardage for the first down. Bears in the second half trying to reestablish physical superiority. On paper, they have it at just about every position. Henry to the 30. That's one of Goldsmith's best accomplishments at Rice is to get his people to ignore what is there on paper because they lose about every game on paper. Oh, yeah. They're in a mismatch just about every game. But, boy, they are getting closer and closer each year. You could see it last year starting to develop with the development of Cobb and, and a lot of young players. And as you said, Dave, they are shooting them next year. They're saying, hey, we are going to be a conference comp you know, competitor this year, next year. On the draw, White passes outside. And has another bear first down inside the 20. White for 13, and they really haven't missed Mims while he's been in there. No, they haven't. This play was designed to go inside. This is just an adjustment. You can see there, Wheeler gets caught up inside. He makes a, a poor choice to go inside, and White just takes it around the outside. But that's a nice adjustment by a running back. 6.50 in the third. 
in a 17-17 game. Bonner right, Miller left. Triple stack out with McKenzie in motion. And straight. Rolling down near the 10 with a flag down. The flag came right as the snap was delivered. And for the second time on this drive, motion Baylor. I was looking at Matt Sign that play as we as we check that update on the Dr. Pepper scoreboard. And Sign is either very tired or very sore. He got up very, very slow. Well, they should all be tired. It is 92 degrees. That's in the air. Add probably 10, 15 degrees on the turf. They're lucky because it's dry. It's only 22% humidity today. And there's a, a nice continual breeze out of the north. Pittsburgh and Atlanta underway. Pirates with the first inning run in the NLCS. Pearson motion. And that time they were ready for straight on first and 15. I want to tell you, man, we talked about Matt Sign again. His number just disappears. He's the last one to get up off the pile, underneath the pile. Watch this. It's a double team again. you got to get real low when it's a double team. Try to make a pile. <laughs> That's a tackle by a trip. See him way down underneath there? There he is, 96. He's the guy with a face mask about six inches below the asteroid. <laughs> you better believe it. You can't get blown off the line if you're lower than your opponent. He wants to replace you someday, Dave Rowe. Sports director at Campus Station KTRU. Here's the reverse to Miles. They were ready for this. Alonzo Williams, one of the quicker outside backers in football. You're able to run a reverse when the backside containment breaks down, and Williams does his job. This is the reverse action you can see here. Now watch Williams come into your screen, 46. Breaks down, drives him deep, shoestring tackle, but uh, very effective. And he just did his assignment on that play. Says he plays linebacker the way he would play strong safety. That's the size he has. He's 5'11", 200. Come on, no! Defenses philosophy is go for speed over size and on play action Joe over the middle to Bonner trapped or caught they say he trapped it at the 10. Boy Joe saw this just at the last second and I mean he drilled it but the nose of the ball was down here's Bonner now watch it's just a curl in he's driven the defense off now the nose of the ball is down so the ball's very very low Yep, there's the touch on the turf. He didn't have control of it ahead of time. That's a trap. Didn't bounce in, so if he can hang on to it, it's a yep. catch, but he couldn't. Ireland, who bettered his previous career best by eight yards on the last play of the first half, will try a 43-yarder here into the win. And this one wide right. One of the few flaws in his senior year, and we're still tied, and we'll be back after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, to pull this type of upset, you got to have some luck, and Rice just got some luck. He certainly did. Now they need to unleash this man who has lost yardage. He's lost five yards overall in this third quarter at 132 at halftime. Will it play action? Just quick enough to get that one off to Eric Henley. McFarland with the tackle at midfield and a fumble after the whistle. Still Rice ball. Well, that's the most I've seen Willick move on the play. Little sprint action gets behind his guard. He showed a little bit of mobility then. Different people react to pressure different ways, and Willick knew he was under the microscope. His backup, Josh LaRocca, effective at Texas last week. We haven't seen him today. That's how well Willig is playing. Cobb tripped up. Robin Jones started the job that Lachey Maston finished. Boy, what a, what a job by Robin Jones that time. He shot through and wiped off the double team and got an arm in there and tripped up Trevor Cobb. 
That's great penetration. Jones lost in the Santana Dotson fanfare this year. What a game last week. Two recovered fumbles, two tackles for loss, and a sack at Houston. Leads the defensive line, six tackles for loss, and four sacks this year. Through the hands of Crow. Timing pattern. Will it let it go before Crow had finished his cut? And a little on the high side. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I will announce the Southwest Airlines player of the game. We have 3.44 still to go in the third quarter. And the Owls come up on third and 12. just collapsed around him. Marcus Lowe may have touched that football. There's Lowe in the middle now. That's a twist inside. One person takes inside. He slides out there. Watch, watch Lowe. Get the hands up in the face. It's kind of like throwing through the woods. It's a little tall, with a little hard with those big trees up there. And Robertson kicking better every time. Fair caught inside the 10, which you don't normally want. If you're Miles, that one goes 44 yards. Some of the nearly 38,000 on hand. Second largest crowd to see Baylor host Rice here in Waco. And uh, we've already seen the adjustments that the Baylor defense yeah. has done against Trevor Cobb. Now Rice has to counter with something. Well, they certainly do. Now Rice has to stop him. They can stop him on this down and on this series and get great field position. But, boy, what great adjustments by Baylor. Shutting down that inside, forcing Cobb wide. And they've used their speed to stop him. And, I mean, he has been stopped absolutely cold. Bouncing off is straight. Bouncing out to the 23-yard line. 15 yards, and if there's an attrition factor here, maybe it was against straight in the first half, but it now is against the Rice defense. He is wearing them down. Miami has held off Penn State there. Orange Bowl win streak intact, and Michigan rubbing out Michigan State in the fourth quarter. Who do you think's more worn out, straight or the Owl defense? Well, I'll tell you the problem with trying to tackle straight, I see is you can't get your arms around him. He's such a compact load, he's got that great leg strength. White from tailback, wrapped up by Bennett at the 30. And let me tell you this, not only can he run, but what a block. In the I formation, he is the most important person because he gets that first block. And watch this, boom. You see the running back flashing by him? That's why Grant Pass said, thank you, Lord, for having him get back here so quick. What does it seem like they've had 426 total yards? Best offense in the country coming in. Joe on the pitch. Out of a high tackle attempt is White. David Griffin might have saved the touchdown at the 32. 37 yards for Greg White. Now you've just seen Robert Strait take two handoffs right up the middle. The one block, I should say, and the one. Now he's going to fake to him. And what it's going to do is it's going to hold those linebackers right there. Fake, pulls the ball back out. You see all the white shirts there? They're so concerned about stopping him when they flip the ball out. Now they've got the outside. Griffin saved an even bigger game. Now back to the fullback. And in this case, it's Henry who had the 64-yard touchdown run early. He sees 96 getting up awful slow. And he's limping this time. He's hurt, I believe. Sign is hurt. Well, had a knee brace after an injury that, as we said, was originally diagnosed as a torn ligament. And then they checked it the next day, and it wasn't torn. That's the only way he's playing. He's backed up by a true freshman, Eric Rodriguez. 
And in fact, along that front four for Rice, all the backups are freshmen. Well, I want to tell you something. I would take Matt Sign on my team to play if I was. He could play for the Raiders. That's a great compliment for him. Great desire. Just doesn't want to come out. You have to admire that. White met head on. Good finish by Sean Olberding from defensive end. I also remember the words that uh, Fred Goldsmith said last night. He said, if 96 has to come out, boy, are we thin up front. Well, so far today, eight tackles. Give him 34 for the year. Now he's going to be over there leaning on the ear. Fred Goldsmith standing next to him and say, Coach, I'm ready to go back in. Just need a little drink. That's the type of competitor he is. Another guy they missed, Corey Seymour, who tore up a knee a couple of weeks ago. That defensive tackle. Good catch by a stretching Lee Miles. Short of the first down, but inside the 25. When you're 5'6", you got a stretch. Well, I want to tell you something. That was an excellent catch. Joe throws this ball, and when you have to catch it, reach back across your body, that's a quick ball, and look at him stretch for that thing. You look how high his legs are off the ground. He was way up for that football. On fourth down this year, the Baylor Bears 10 for 11. They need two. Joe gets it on the stretch to the 21. Williams closed quickly, got him low, but Joe with the upper body stretch has the first down. And you want to see a line surge? Ooh, you're going to see a line surge here. Watch the green shirts. Room. I mean, they just come off the football. Now watch Joe here with the stretch in that football out. He almost loses it over top of his head. Baylor this quarter has 10 first downs. You think they got serious at halftime? Yeah, real serious. And they may not get the snap off before the third quarter comes to an end. So we'll head to the fourth quarter. Still tied up. Baylor favored by 20 in the fight of their year so far as we head to the fourth here in Waco. Quarter in Waco, 17-17. But the Bears, who rolled up 235 total yards in the third quarter, only seven points to show for all that marching, have it first and 10 at the Owl 21-yard line. And Joe dragged down by Charles Gulbronson, the defensive tackle from Ridgely, West Virginia. Man who replaced Corey Seymour makes his best stop today. Third quarter stats. 235 of those 474 in that last 15 minutes. Look at the rush yards. 321 rush yards. Wow. And Rice now with more yards through the air than on the ground. Loss of four, second and 14. And another Baylor fumble. This one they covered. That has been maybe the best indication that their concentration this week, not quite what it has been or will be when AM comes in here next week. The Braves, after trailing one to nothing, answer with four in their half of the first inning. Loss of four more, third and 18. And Joe, incomplete. Halfway between Pierce, the tight end, and White, the tailback. Last time Taft sent Ireland out, he missed a 43-yarder. But he made the 58-yarder go in this direction, so that'll give him a lot of confidence. Well, this one will be even longer. This will be a 46-yarder. And again, he'll have the wind behind him, which was the case when he hit from 58 at the end of the first half. Brentham the holder. Sean Washington almost got a hand on it. He's again wide to the right. 
It's had his highest high and a couple of his lowest lows in this uh, same game. And as a result, the Bears cannot pull out of this 17-17 tie. More from Waco after this from Southwest Airlines. Today's game tracer brought to you by the Schick Tracer. Cobb has actually lost seven yards since halftime, still 125 for the day. Willig with better than respectable numbers. And Baylor with a huge third quarter, but still tied 17 all. First time today, Willig gets a breather. And we see true freshman Josh LaRocca out of San Antonio Clark, 6'1", 170. Much more mobile, stronger arm than Willig, but much less experienced. And last week at Texas, 5 for 11, 65 yards. And a touchdown to another true freshman from San Antonio, Jimmy Lee, the only Rice scorer in their 28-7 defeat. finds room up the middle. Brian Hand brings him down after a pickup of five or six. Now this is quite a spot for the first action today for La Rocca. There you see the numbers from last week. Would you have expected him to come in earlier than the fourth quarter of a tight game if he was going to play at all today? Well, I think this is just to get an offensive spark. They're still in this football game, and, and Fred Goldsmith knows that sometimes a change in quarterback can be a good thing, a positive thing, because all of a sudden your team says, hey, here comes our big reliever. And there went Marcus Lowe. Now there's a change right off, change in the snap count. The question is, did the snap count pull him off, or was he pulled off by movement by one of the offensive linemen? We may be able to see this as we look down the line. See the emphasis? There's the snap count emphasis. And he yells it again. Yep. It's not, it's not uh, by the offensive lineman. The snap, the center is taught to snap the football when he sees the defender enter the neutral zone. Offsides Baylor. I bet not too many snap counts get forgotten at Rice. <laughs> <laughs> I can believe that. That's a heads up play that that has a tendency to hold your defensive line where they've just been flying off the ball and they're used to that same snap count. All of a sudden now they get a little bit hesitant and they don't come off the ball as quickly. The Rocca has had two brothers play college football. One played here at Baylor 80 to 83 Rock, and another played at Navy. And over Henley. Now what they're gaining here is the fact that had that been Willig, and there's no knock at Willig, he is flat out not as quick. That might have been a sack as opposed to second and ten. Well, LaRocca did a smart thing when he when he took his little roll out. He saw that he was going under a lot of pressure. Rather than try to force the ball in there, throw it out of bounds, no harm. They're underway at Fair Park in Dallas, OU in Texas, and for David McWilliams, his 24th game as a player or a coach, only Darrell Royal has been in that many. Option pitch, Tom can't get away from Mastin. What a play by Mastin. Not only did he have the quarterback if he kept the ball, he made such a quick adjustment once the flip was there that he caught him from behind. Watch this when, when he comes down, when LaRocca comes down the line, Mastin's got the quarterback. And you see how quickly he makes that adjustment and just rips him down from, the, from behind. Today for the leading bear tackler on the year. Cobb now 24 carries, 127 yards after a loss of three. There's Tia. Curtis Hafford right up the middle. Well, I want to tell you, Hafford did the perfect timing on this play. He's the middle linebacker. He's supposed to be about three yards off, but he sneaks up to the right of our picture and boom, just bursts through, and there's nowhere for LaRocca to go. So on fourth down, into the wind, a low liner. Richardson to Miles at the 25. 
The Owls special teams have done a good job all day. That's probably their best return, 11 yards. After a boot of 44, 11, 28 to go in the game. Nodded here in Waco. Well, this score is probably shocking in 48 states around the country and not so shocking anymore in Arkansas and Texas because uh, Rice is no longer a surprise when they play with a team like Baylor. No, people who have po followed this Rice program, they realize, they've seen it over the last two or three years, that it has slowly built with quality athletes, quality coaching, and they have turned the corner. They have got respectability, regardless of what the outcome of this football game is. There's Bonner, gets away from Bennett, might be gone. Jackson knocks him out at the 15. You can only control him for so long, and he busts this one for 49. Well, they give him so much respect as a cushion, the distance again, that he catches this ball. When he catches it here, look at the corner's not even in the picture. Now it's a foot race. I'm surprised anyone caught him if he really has 4-2 in the 40-yard dash speed. Boy, how many times have we seen that this year, that long pass to Bonner? Up the middle, straight to the 11. They could do worse than just keep putting it in his midsection and see what he can carve on his own at this point on the field because nothing else this half has gotten them into the end zone. Look at the yardage they've rung up. But they have been unable for quite a while to break this 17-17 top. Well, I can't remember the last time I saw a team with over 500 yards of offense and to be in a tied position. Straight again, he's inside the 10. And that will bring up third and about four. Only Bear touchdown with all these second half yards was on a 64 yard burst by John Henry. And that much time remaining for Grant Taft's undefeated Bears, a 20 point favorite coming in. They need just outside the five, and Joe dragged down by Joey Wheeler. Again, that quickness defensively for Rice. Well, Wheeler makes the right choice on this play. He's got the quarterback on the pitch. Watch this. No fake action. Just get on outside. He's got J.J. Joe all the way. And he tackled for a huge This play. is the first defense Baylor has played that really knows how to defend the option. Yes, with Fred Goldsmith being at Arkansas, how many times he coached against it every day. So he knows the odd. He knows that offense. He knows how to stop it. Now Ireland, after that 58-yarder, missing from 46 and 43, will try a 28-yarder here, and he has missed his third straight. Oh boy! And look at the reaction by Grant Tab. Take off the hat, rub the back of the head, smile, and just try to grit it up. Well, that's like John Daly driving 400 yards and missing two-inch putts. You know he's got the strength, but he's lost his range, and we're still tied. So we're stuck on 17s. 9.27 now to play. What must be going through Jeff Ireland's mind? Well, kickers, they, they have the the mountaintops and the valleys. He was on the mountaintop at the end of the half with that 58-yarder, and I can tell you there's nobody more upset than Jeff Ireland right now. LaRocca remains the quarterback, and on play action, throw back over the middle to Tim Wynn, the tight end. A lot of running around for a gain of about five yards. Next week, we're in Little Rock. Last time for the Longhorns and the Razorbacks in the Southwest Conference. And we hope you can join us. The Longhorns are underway in Dallas against Oklahoma. And Ireland's got to be wondering where it all went wrong. Three missed field goals this half. Helping the Owls survive as long as they had. 8.43 to play. Cobb burrows for a couple. 
A lot of remarkable numbers in this game, but right up at the top of the list has got to be the difference between Cobb in the first half and Cobb in the second half. Oh, they have shut him down. After he had 132 yards, I think it was, in the first half. He has just been shut down. They made the offensive and defensive adjustments. He has minus two yards in the second half. Ugh. Two needed on third down. Cobb has the first. Ankle tackled by Brian Hand as he reaches the 32-yard line. And the clock rolls inside eight minutes. Now, in your ultimate list of preferences, Fred Goldsmith would love a long, long drive. And look what East Carolina is doing at number 15, Syracuse. Well, that's a shock. That's not a shock. No. Under eight minutes. Long drive, use up all the time, and win it at the end. The lock up bowling the snap, but hangs on at the 27. Loss of about four or five yards, and that is not in the game plan. Pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. We are at a shocker here. 17-17, Rice and number eight undefeated Baylor. If Rice wins, they go to three and two for the year. And one and one in the conference. There is the contrast we mentioned. There's the audible call. LaRocca wanted to hit Howard. I'm not sure if Howard got the full meaning of the play change. You saw LaRocca clapping his hands and screaming at Howard. I'm not sure that Howard, even after that, heard him. Now, when you look at when you look at the break that Howard made on the play, he obviously missed, missed the audible. Willig remains on the sideline. He got the owls this far, and Goldsmith puts it in the hands of the true freshman to try and pull it out. Athleticism over experience. Another play change. There's Blitz. Got it off. Henley, first down. Boy, I want to tell you one thing. This is a combination of several things going right. LaRocca saw the Blitz ahead of time. He knew he was going to have to get the ball off fast. Henley's down here in the slot. He's just going to take a short inside angle. You can see he goes way high to get the football. It wasn't a well-thrown football, but it was complete. With the emergence of Cobb, you've seen the numbers drop the last two years for Henley. Third catch of the day, so he may not make All-American, but his value to the Owl offense is still there. Under six and a half minutes we go, Cobb. Anytime he has gotten positive yardage at all this half, it's been a surprise. And he grinds out a couple here. If you're overstanding on the sideline with Rice, everyone is saying, don't make a mistake. Don't bubble the ball. Don't throw an interception. Don't have a missed snap. Continue to drive the football. Utilize the clock. If you're on Baylor's side, you're saying, stop them. Our offense at least gives us another shot for a field goal. You think they want another shot at the field goal? Well, if you're any kind of a kicker, you do. Third time on the drive. He audibilizes. And on the option, here's Kyle. Foot race. And Hand wins it. Ryan Hand held on long enough for Frankie Smith to finish him off. You can see what his hand did. About ripped his shirt off. Cobb on this play. They really never committed to the quarterback, so Hand was in great position. You're going to see him right there come into your picture. Tries to stiff arm. You see Hand just hanging on. Some of the best tackles you can make are the ones where you just hang on. So third and four. for Howard. First down again. Baylor 33. 
He had his choices there because Henley was wide open over the middle. Well, Ellison dropped off so far, he just gave too much of a cushion. He was back. He wasn't even in the picture when the when he turned around and came inside. When Howard turned, he, Ellison wasn't even near him. What a story this would be if they can get anything out of this drive. We're at 444 remaining in the game. 17-17 in Waco. Powell's led by 10. Cobb. Teddy Patton first to greet him as he leans forward to the 30-yard line. Time-wise, this is exactly the type drive Rice would want. It certainly is. Teddy Patton's had an exciting day in here today. He's just fought all day long. He's got outside containment. He's got to fight off the block, get back in on the tackle. He does a nice job. Good containment on the play, kept his feet. It's what you want to do it as, as a defensive end. We hit the four-minute mark. Second and seven. Smith and had the ball been thrown a foot lower he might have held on nice run by LaRocca that time to get outside the pressure and then throw across the body a little bit high but once you go up once that ball hits your hands you've got to concentrate on squeezing it he doesn't and the ball comes out and again a good reaction there by Frankie Smith to break up that play well you hate to say big down but this is a huge down Three minutes, 50 seconds, third down, and about seven yards to go. They have picked up their last three on third down. <laughs> and someone may have gotten a hand on that one. It was intended for Winston LeVan. Fourth and seven. And the specialty unit will come on. Daryl Richardson's longest kick all year was the one that he made in the first half, which officially was a 33-yarder. This has shades of Colorado game for Baylor. Yeah, they need Santana Dotson's big paw out there. This would be, out of the hold of Chris Miller, a 38-48-yard effort. And it's a fake. Miller on the keep. Good speed. Mastin knocks him out, but the Owls are alive. Just like you draw it on the paper. All out rush inside. And watch to the top of your screen. You're not going to see anybody come from that side. Everybody was on the other side rushing the ball, the field side. What a call for Fred Goldsmith. Miller transferred with Goldsmith from Arkansas to Rice. Biggest contribution of his career as an Owl. First and 10, 340 remaining. From the Baylor 18, Trevor Cobb, driven back by Dotson. Best on best there. Best runner in the nation, one of the best defenders in the nation. And I can tell you, in that huddle right now, that defensive huddle, they're saying, dig a little bit deeper. Somebody get something going. Somebody come up with a big play. The same thing on the Rice team side. They're saying, hey, 314 left. The clock is rolling. Let's run it all the way down. Let's have a chippy field goal for the win. Throw left. Henley and LeVan right. to Cobb, he actually made a great play not to fumble that away. I think that was Marcus Lowe that burst through there. I mean, he blew the center. Watch the center. Boom, and there he is, right there in the middle of your screen. And look at that swallow. So with 2.50 remaining, it'll be third and 11 for the Owls after this from Southwest Airlines. Daryl Richardson may be the man to decide this game. 17-17 with 2.50 to play. And the Owls deciding what to do on third and 11. 
This is a Baylor call timeout. They have two. The Owls have all three of their timeouts. And what a story after being iced on the bench for three and a half quarters. True freshman Josh LaRocca leading the 16 play drive. And look at the time of this drive. Six and a half minutes. That's what they wanted. They wanted to drive the ball down and not give Baylor any time. This reminds you last year. Boy, does it ever. A two-point conversion that Rice missed. That was 17-16. Baylor. Third and 11. Cobb out of Dotson's tackle, and then Haffer got him at the 12. And they will still need four yards on fourth down. And the Owls, nope, the Bears will burn another timeout. That takes them down to one remaining. Yeah, that's a good call because what you want to do is you want to give your offense as much time as possible. So you use this timeout, it's going to save 25, at least 25 to 35 seconds. That's a heads-up call. A lot of these guys we're seeing out there today will come under heavy consideration for the Dave Rowe All-Conference <laughs> team coming. November 30th, we'll be picking them. That's a lot of fun. Fun, and there's the Bachikach, all name candidates from these two teams. We feed them all into the computer. The computer makes the final decision. We are only programmers. That's right. How about Bill Haley in the comments? I like that one. It's kind of an early favorite. Well, it'll be fourth and five for the Owls. They led 17 7. Ireland got Baylor within seven with a 58-yard field goal at the end of the first half. He has since given Grant Taff about 100 more gray hairs by missing three straight makeable field goals in the second half. John Henry with a 64-yard touchdown, tied it at 17. And we've been stuck 17-all for a long, long time. Well, what Baylor wants to do right now is have a safe field goal rush. Uh, I can't imagine twice in a row falling for the old fake field goal, but you want to have that rush up the middle, get that pressure, get those hands up. This will be 31 yards for Richardson. And he got it. Fred Goldsmith's reaction on that, looking across the field. It was, I'll tell you one thing, he is the happiest person in this stadium. There he is, to the right of your screen. Yes. And, of course, there's the kicker. Just a red shirt freshman. And he may have delivered one of the biggest upsets in college football this year. Daryl Richardson has given the Owls a 20 to 17 advantage with 239 remaining. Plenty of time, maybe for Ireland to get a chance to tie it, but preferably in the minds of the Bear fans. That's time enough for Baylor to pull it out with a touchdown drive. Extremely high kick to the 14 and Miles looks for room outside. Can't find a whole lot out of bounds. After an 18-yard return, they are 68 yards away, and they have plenty of time. No need to get in too big of a rush here. 17-play drive took nearly seven minutes. Richardson with the 38-yarder, the longest of his young career at Rice. Well, the number one thing for Baylor right now and J.J. Joe is don't panic. Got a lot of time on the clock. You practice this situation during the week. Just run your offense like it's, like it's normally run. Play action on first down. Joe slung down by Sean Olberding. And it's the Owls teeing off. Clock rolls to 13 and counting. Bears go with the huddle. That'll cost them 10 or 15 seconds. 
Draw play to White. And he trips when he had big yardage. If he steps a little higher, he's got at least 10 more than he got. And an injured bear down, Lee Miles. Miles at the 34. Stops the clock with a minute, 54. Boy, he is in agony. Yeah, you can see him reaching up. He's twisted something or pulled something. Boy, and that hurts because you don't have that downfield speed now to take the pressure off of Bonner. Terry Thornton is the man who puts Lee Miles down. Looks like the uh, the shoes catch in the AstroTurf and the body twists and the shoes don't give. Don't think that was Thornton. That was his own man, White, Greg White, who ran into Miles. Well, this is a good chance for Baylor. You know, it's, a, it's almost a free timeout. You've got a lot of time to stand there and discuss exactly what's going on there. You don't see coaches on the field because it's not a charge timeout, but you've got a chance to get your offense together and all the offensive linemen saying, listen, everybody block a little bit extra. Wide outs all saying, let's get clear. Let's get in that one-on-one -on -one situation and break it. Just a lot of time to go over the different parts of the game that are going to have an effect on this last series. Boy, a tougher Lee Miles as he makes his way to his feet. Little senior from Mark, Texas, Oklahoma, leading Texas in the first quarter. And not often do you see a guy who's feet catching artificial turf walk off even with as slight a limp as Miles has. Next week, Texas at Arkansas from Little Rock. We hope you can join us. And we hope it's as good as this one's been. Baylor will have third and seven. They have missed their last four third down opportunities. And the clock rolls in a minute 50. Joe again dropped by Olberding. He was a yard shy. And with a minute 40, the clock still rolls. When you can't take a chance on passing this football for the fear of dropping it, so you, you almost have to run in this fourth and one. See if they go straight up the middle. They do, and he might not get it. Driven back. I don't think he got it. I don't even think it's going to be close. I will say they held, but Alexander agrees. And it's Rice Ball, a minute 21 away from the biggest victory in Rice football history, at least since 1963. At least. The unthinkable, now all too possible for Baylor. Well, you remember we talked earlier about that, that 74 game with Baylor getting their credibility, beating Texas. That's happened in one minute and 21 seconds. That will happen for Rice. And Willig back in. Cobb tireless as he carries inside the 25. So often his big breakers come when everybody else is tired. He has worn down the defense, and he's still got more. They will stop the clock for the chains with a minute 13. Well, I know what I would do in this situation. Baylor's going to have one timeout. I would just kneel down. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even risk trying to run the football. I'd take the ball, I'd swarm around, I'd put somebody deep, and I would just kneel down. A couple more snaps is all you need. La Rocca led the game winning drive. If they hang on, will again to try and salt it away, but they keep going to cop. A little bit risky. Rice, remember, already this year lost a game because of a late fumble by Cobb's backup, Byron Poston. And Baylor will burn that last time out with 44 seconds. I guess that's how much confidence they have that Trevor Cobb won't drop the ball. Well, I still wouldn't even chance it. I'd take the snap and I'd just drop down. Because I can promise you now, if he, if he breaks free and you hit him from the back, he'll fumble like anyone else will. Well, 
But were they looking ahead or were they that good? That's a great question. I think it's going to be debated all week long. Obviously, you can say they were looking ahead, but that's not what coaches, coaches just don't allow that. That's the first thing you do on Monday morning is you say, we've got Rice this week. We don't look ahead to Texas A&M. Of course, coming off the big victory that they had last week against Houston, that may have, that may have uh, you know, compounded this problem today, but I want to tell you something. Rice has played so far above what I think even Fred Goldsmith expected today. Their defense has played with every ounce of energy they have. Now Willard to a knee. Baylor cannot stop the clock. And this is actually going to happen. Unbelievable. But it's going to happen. 20-point underdog. One more snap, and they've got the biggest win in the modern era of our football. There are a couple of hundred happy people in Floyd Casey Stadium and about 38,000 stunned as their Bears lose for the first time in 1991 and drop from the ranks of the unbeaten. Amazing, but the Owls pull it off. I heard one coach on the sidelines saying this is a shot heard around the world. It is heard all around the football world. 